Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here on the East Coast. I'm from Wisconsin. Big surprise, right? <laughs> um, I, in fact, it's warmer, believe it or not, in Wisconsin today than it is out here in Maryland. But uh, happy to be here nonetheless. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a parish pastor by training. I served for 17 years in Findlay, Ohio. Anybody ever hear of Findlay, Ohio? Wow, okay. Now, you, from Wisconsin, you simply go uh, east toward Toledo and turn right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, after that, I was a pastor for five years at uh, Trinity in Watertown, Wisconsin. Ever hear of Watertown, Wisconsin? Okay. And that's where I still live. And for the last 16 years, approximately, I've been uh, with Wisconsin Lutheran Child and Family Service Christian Family Solutions. And uh, happy to be here. Married for 40, almost 42 years now. I have four adult children, seven grandchildren, and uh, um, that's enough about me. Okay? Um, what you're, you probably didn't realize that you're going to be on television this morning. Okay? And. Uh, demonstrate for you folks how it is that we're able to bring counseling, professional counseling, to people literally no matter where they live. And um, um, the, uh, we used to be a very regional ministry. Uh, we had uh, clinics, have clinics in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois. But it's a little bit of a drive for you folks if you need counseling to go all the way to Illinois or Wisconsin. And so we are very much a regional ministry. That changed about 12 years ago. How many of you use Skype or FaceTime? Yeah, almost everybody. And if you don't, you understand the concept. What we're going to use this morning is neither Skype nor FaceTime. Uh, but it is similar. Uh, the product that we use is called Zoom. And it is uh, uh, guaranteed to be totally encrypted because when you counsel, you want confidentiality, don't you? Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you to share with the group, with me, what it is you think we're probably counseling people for the most today. Marriage? Marriage is still probably the big one, okay? And relationships in general, okay? You're having trouble with parents, having trouble with kids, having trouble with somebody at work, having trouble with your neighbor. Um, we counsel people for that. Anything else? Money? Money, finances, and if you have money problems, you have an awful lot of what in your life? Stress. Stress, Stress brings about <coughs> anxiety. anxiety. Anxiety can lead to depression. depression. Okay? We do an awful lot of uh, stress, anxiety, depression related counseling. Anything else? Grief. Grief, yeah, loneliness. There's such a thing as geriatric depression. Anything else? Substance abuse, internet, <coughs> pornography addiction, PTSD, and it's not just returning military, it's people that are victims of domestic abuse. And the list goes on and on and on. Uh, we have over 80 counselors. Eight, uh, seven of them are doctors. The rest of them are master's level clinicians. We have 50 clinics in six states. And we have no clinic in Maryland, but we are able and have counseled people that are members of this congregation. And um, we're able to do that because our counselors can counsel people face to face using the technology we're about to demonstrate for you this morning. So, um, um, Dan, are you there? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can maybe turn you up a little bit, maybe, huh? <laughs> All right. Okay. Testing, testing. All right. Can you hear okay back there now? Okay. Dan, why don't you introduce yourself uh, to these good folks here in Clarksville, Maryland, and uh, tell us where in the world you are today. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and thank you for taking out a few moments of your Sunday morning and allow us to give you some updates on our ministry at Christian Family Solutions. 
Pastor Malik mentioned that we are uh, primarily a Christian counseling uh, organization, and we have expanded our ministry exponentially using what we're doing right now, um, using a secure video connection. We can connect with our Wells members anywhere as long as they have that, that secure connection. Uh, I am, uh, as Pastor Maddox mentioned, my name is Dan Donaldson. I've been with the organization for, this is my 21st year, I think. So I've been here for quite some time. Love our ministry, love what we're doing, love to provide access to people who are hurting and need that extra Christian counseling service uh, when it's appropriate. Uh, I am a licensed professional counselor myself, licensed in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Uh, and let's see, I'm coming to you today from a faraway land called Germantown, Wisconsin. Um, so yes, uh, if you're familiar with the geography of, of Wisconsin, we're, just, we're kind of a suburb of, of the Milwaukee area, sort of in the southeastern part of the, of the state. Not too far from Mequon, where Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary is located, if you're familiar with that. So. Okay. <clears throat> Um, try to guess in your mind how many members of this congregation, what percentage of the membership of this congregation is in need of professional counseling help in any given year? Studies have borne them out. 20%. Uh, in a book published by our synod, authored by a Lutheran psychologist, after studying a cross-section, not just Wells, cross-section of Christian churches throughout America, he concluded that in any given year, 20% of the congregation's membership is in need of professional counseling help. It's quite a few. And uh, do you think the need for counseling is getting less or more? It's getting more. Um, and for two reasons, I believe. First of all, our problem is getting more. Yeah. Our, is Christianity dominating our culture? No. And so people are struggling to try to cope in whatever way they can, and many times they don't cope that well. And um, also, the, the openness that people have to counseling today is a lot different than it was a couple of decades ago. Um, uh, people break their leg, they go to the doctor. Nowadays, they realize that they've got some kind of issue, one of those that we talked about earlier, there's help available. And you might say, what, what makes us our ministry different from, say, for example, uh, a professional counselor down the street. Well, our, our counselors have the same kind of training a counselor down the street has. Uh, they all are highly trained in what's called evidence-based counseling. In other words, proven um, uh, techniques because of studies that show uh, results. But one thing that our counselors have that a secular counselor does not have is what? Christian background and the ability and the determination to incorporate God's word into the counseling session when it's appropriate. Does God have anything to say about hope? Forgiveness. Worth. Self-control relationships, selflessness. God has everything to say about that. And so <clears throat> my contention, I'm not, I'm not trying to bash secular counseling, uh, but uh, they're at a disadvantage because they're kind of asking the person they're trying to help to take a seat on a two-legged stool and feel comfortable. Uh, the third leg is the Word of God, and we believe that we can help the entire person, and we do. Last year, over 35,000 hours of counseling help to people. And um, currently, there are over 650 Wells congregations that make use of this service for the hurting members of the congregation. We have a lot of Lutheran high schools throughout the country. We are counseling at all of them. Um, Wells World Missions. Do, they, do you think world missionary families ever have any stress or difficulty in their life? Absolutely. Um, world Missions is one of our clients, you might say, one of our partners in ministry. Uh, Martin Luther College in New Ulm. We have a counselor on campus three days a week. <coughs> Bethany Lutheran College, Wisconsin Lutheran College, our seminary in Mequon. And, uh, and so we're helping a lot of people. Like I said, over 80 counselors, guess how many more we could use today and keep them busy? 
We could use 20 more today. And that's a lot of counselors. Um, fortunately, we are establishing a master's level counseling program through Bethany Lutheran College in Mankato, Minnesota. Hopefully we'll have a pipeline of counselors coming through uh, in the not too distant future. Dan, uh, you are over there in Wisconsin. Why don't you share with these folks here in church um, how it is that we, you don't always think of wells and cutting edge in the same sentence. <laughs> this, this was very cutting edge in its day, okay? And uh, I mean, Skype and FaceTime is pretty common technology today, but at one time it wasn't, and it certainly was not uh, explored as far as the possibility of counseling people who are not coming to the clinic to be in the same room as the counselor. This was brand new stuff. And so 12 years ago, we decided we're going to explore this because we get requests from people like this congregation throughout the country, can't you have a counseling clinic nearby? Because pastors more and more are seeing the need for professional counseling help for the members of the congregation. And so 12 years ago, Dan, we began to explore this. Why don't you walk these folks through what it is we found? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, a, that's a kind of a good background there. You know, we've been providing Christian counseling services on an outpatient level since, boy, the, the late 60s. Uh, so a long time, we, we do it well, uh, and we're, we're proud of what we have, have accomplished in terms of our, of our counseling approach and our expertise. Um, but, um, you know, really, we have been able to serve our well members if they were within driving distance of one of our clinical locations. And back in 2008, we thought, you know, there, there's no way that we're going to be able to open up a, a clinic and, and put one counselor everywhere so that our, our well members can have access to Christian counseling services. Um, so we explored the use of video. Uh, and we started a program called our Member Assistance Program. And in that program, we partnered with well congregations and schools and organizations around the country. The organization covers our discounted fee and the members receive the service at no cost. Either they can come in person, that's just fine, or they can meet by video. So it removes two major obstacles, and you can probably tell which ones those are. The first is just the accessibility to a Christian counselor. Uh, that, that was was essential. The other one is financial. Uh, you know, one of the biggest obstacles for people to get help is money, the, the funding. Uh, they're not sure if their insurance covers, they don't know how much it costs, they've got a large deductible, maybe they're unemployed, they lost their insurance. And, you know, whatever the case may be, there's a financial obstacle. That's usually the number one issue. So with the member assistance program, it's the organization that covers our discounted fee, and the member receives that service at no cost. And we can meet by video. So we tested it out way back in 2008. If you could remember way back then, uh, that was when video conferencing was really in its infancy. And very little research was done on video and counseling. You know, the, the, the concept of meeting with someone in a counseling session, it has always been, you know, I, I have to go to an office and sit in the waiting room and, and talk with someone face to face. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of questions. There were a lot of questions about, will video work? Uh, you, you know, does it work? Uh, and so we were actually approved for a professional research study way back then. And we looked at a couple of things. We looked at symptom reduction or the, the outcomes of counseling. And the second thing we looked at is can you establish a relationship with someone by video, which is the foundation of counseling service. You, you have to be able to establish a relationship with counseling. So we looked at both of those things and we found that the outcomes were, were positive at the same level as in person. So there was no difference in terms of, of the benefit of symptom reduction uh, over time, whether you met with, with, some, with your counselor by video or in person. They were exactly the same results. And then the next thing you looked at was that what's called therapeutic rapport, or that ability to establish a relationship. And that was quite obvious. And, and it's sort of a no-brainer to us today, because all of you who raised your hands and are using Skype and FaceTime and other platform, you're probably using it to establish and maintain relationships with people. 
uh, whether it's work or family or uh, you know whatever it might be, you're you're doing that uh, for a specific pur uh, purpose, and that relationship can certainly be uh, established and maintained. So we just allow the member assistance program to kind of grow over the years. Uh, and what started as well, I think we started with three or four, uh, just a handful of congregations way back when. Uh, we're now up to over 650 uh, organizations around the country and world. Uh, it is not unusual for us to schedule appointments with people in different countries. It, it could be for a world missionary or family member. It could be for a wealth member traveling overseas. Um, not too long ago, I scheduled an appointment. Uh, these were for uh, those for marriage counseling for a couple that was uh, they were members of a congregation in the southern part of the state. Pastor referred them and said, I don't know if it's going to work, but it, you know, the husband travels overseas quite a bit, and he's overseas right now for six months, uh, and hey, no problem. Uh, we connected husband who was overseas with wife uh, here in, in uh, the southern part of the state with a counselor in another part of the state, uh, and, and they did that three-way country. So it worked out very well, uh, and we're able to connect people and remove some of those barriers uh, geographically even. So um, we're very happy and proud to uh, present, and, and this ministry uh, is ever growing, uh, and we are trying to keep the cost very low for congregations so that they can afford it. Uh, and we need help. Uh, we do need donors and those interested in supporting our ministry so that we can continue to expand uh, this ministry and, and make sure that everyone is aware of it and it's uh, really accessible to everyone. Um, this congregation is part of the member assistance program that uh, he's referring to. We stole the idea in a very Christian way. We stole it. And uh, from the EAPs of this world, the employee assistance programs that, uh, that businesses many times have, and uh, we call it a member assistance program. We simply brought that concept into the church. And this uh, congregation is part of your district, the North Atlantic District Member Assistance Program. And as Dan said, we keep, we keep the cost as low as we possibly can. And uh, what we charge a congregation through your district is $75 for every counseling hour, which uh, is a lot of money. But uh, guess how much it actually costs us? 140 And so we depend on what? Donations, yeah. And, um, and uh, we have literally hundreds of families throughout uh, the country that see the need for this type of work being done in their congregation and uh, they, they support us and hopefully you'll consider that. That's about as high pressure as I get, okay? Which hopefully didn't seem too high pressure. Um, and by the way, is, is it difficult to connect up to a counselor from uh, Clarksville, Maryland area? And the answer is if I can do it, anybody can. Okay, uh, at my age, I was not born into the world of technology. I'm an immigrant, okay? And uh, when I graduated from the seminary about uh, oh, 15 years before your pastor did, uh, I had purchased, just before I went to my first call, a brand new, shiny Smith Corona typewriter, <laughs> okay? And guess where that is? That's in a landfill in Ohio. <laughs> and, and so I'm an immigrant into the world of technology. If I have technology issues at home, who do I call? Kids. Grandkids. <laughs> it used to be my kids. Now it's my grandkids. I call, I generally call Ethan. Ethan is 10. <laughs> and a little bit too smart for his own good. You know, one of those kids. Nice kid, but... Uh, <laughs> But I'll, I'll, invariably, it goes like this. Ethan, this is my problem. And you'll think for a minute and say, oh, Papa, that's so easy. <laughs> Maybe for you, okay? And uh, I felt like saying once, Ethan, if you're so smart, how do you spell the word disinherit? <laughs> but uh, I, I, have, <clears throat> I have not gone there yet. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very easy to connect, and if somebody has any questions, we help from our headquarters in Germantown, Wisconsin. Uh, one of the advantages of this program is, remember when I said to you churches around the country were asking, can't we have a counselor near us? 
That would be one counselor. How many, how many uh, specialties are there? And not, one, not a single counselor can have all those specialties. And so now, if with your congregation, part of the member assistance program, somebody who's hurting in this congregation has access to over 80 with multiple specialties available. And so it has truly helped an awful lot of people. Now, um, this doesn't really apply to you because of your geographic location, but of our clinics, of our 50 clinics, um, try to guess how many of those people that come to those 50 clinics are actually Wells members. The answer, again, is less than 20%. Hmm. Why? Insurance companies love us. Why? Because we're not out to soak insurance companies. We simply want to get people better. And they recognize that. And so they send and recommend us to a lot of people. And, and that means that a person coming to us, we, we don't hide our faith. Um, and our, our tagline is Christian Family Solutions. So Christian is right out in front. But it could be somebody who is a Christian something else or has no faith at all. And so we look upon this as an outreach opportunity as well. And if you choose to support us, you're also supporting an outreach effort. By the way, if there are questions along the way, I certainly will uh, stop and entertain any questions. Does anybody have a question so far? Yes, sir. Do you use a TTY for the debt? population? Uh, we can. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, what about the deaf population, Dan? Do we have anybody that is able to sign? Uh, we actually do have one counselor, Kent Robinson, who does uh, uh, do some American Sign Language. And uh, I wouldn't say that he's an expert at it, but he can do it. Uh, we can also use interpreters to bring them on as, you know, like the third person on your, on your video screen so that there can be some interpretation, too. Okay. Yes. So you're just speaking of only 20% as well. So if somebody is not in a Wells congregation, is an outsider, and wants to, you know, is referred, how do they, do you, re do you charge insurance? Do they, like, what would cover that? <clears throat> Depends on if they're using video or if they're coming video, to a clinic. Let's say video. Say, for example, somebody wants to come to us, Dan, by video, and they're not part of the Wells. How do we handle that? Well, we actually can uh, provide video assisted counseling. It's called telehealth in certain states where we have counselors licensed. So we actually have counselors licensed in eight, I think it's eight different states now. And, uh, and they can come to us directly, use their insurance, or pay privately. It's the states where we don't have counselor's license, where we run, where we run a video through the model of our member assistance program. And with that program, we can provide short-term counseling, not long-term, uh, not long-term outpatient counseling. Otherwise, we have to be licensed in all 50 states, and that would be, uh, we have to have all of our counselors licensed in all the states, and that would be an extraordinary amount of money. Um, so we use a member assistance program. It's not for long-term issues, but what we do with MAP, or the member assistance program, we do a good assessment. We do some short-term problem resolution. We help them uh, find a, a, a kind of a long-term resource if that's needed, and then we do some follow-up. Um, so it's not a permanent solution. Uh, for instance, if you were located here in our clinic, you know, you could meet with a counselor as long as you'd like. Uh, but in MAP, there are session limits. So is Maryland one of them? We have no counselor in the state of Maryland. Oh, yeah, they have to be in this For example, we have a counselor in Florida. Okay. Uh, we have a counselor in California. Uh, and uh, counselors in Illinois, that, that type of thing. So that changes the game a little bit. Um, laws have not caught up with technology. And so we're trying to do whatever we can do. Um, another question that often comes up Say, for example, your church is a part of the member assistance program. Uh, can somebody who's not a member of this church use your member assistance program? And some churches have spread the umbrella wider to uh, if somebody is kind of a prospect member and they're going through difficulty. 
Might that be a way in which this congregation exhibits care, concern, love for that person and brings them under the umbrella? How this congregation pays your district the $75 an hour for every counseling hour, that's up to you. Say, for example, somebody is receiving help that certainly could afford that. They can pay the congregation, the congregation pays the district, and the district pays us. So there are lots of ways of doing it. So, uh, but, but that is something churches are seeing a need for more and more. People they're reaching out to are hurting, and they want to be able to offer the kind of help that they, that person needs. Yes? So because there's no um, clinician here, we couldn't bill our own. You guys can bill our insurance here. That's Could why not. we use member assistance program. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about, uh, is there a Catholic version of this? It would say a Catholic say, I need help, and, and a Catholic recommended you because you were more better equipped to deal with and they couldn't. Or you have to be... They, they would have, they, it's a good question, they would have to be part of a member assistance program. That's where the, that's where the laws limit us, okay? They could not come to us on their own. They would have to come through a program like this church's program or this district's program. Okay? Yes, ma'am. What about confidentiality of the counseling sessions that it's online? Uh, Dan, that's a gr great question. Uh, the question is, is, is confidentiality guaranteed with online counseling? Yeah, oh yeah, most definitely, yeah. We are. Uh, we have to apply by the HIPAA laws like everyone else and confidentiality and privacy laws. Um, so we use Zoom for healthcare, uh, and I don't know if you can see it up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, but there's a little green uh, catalog up there um, showing that it's encrypted. So all of our connections are completely encrypted, and we use an electronic medical record uh, system that is also secure, uh, and anything that uh, is set in a counseling session, stays between you and your counselor unless you were to sign a release so that information could be shared with that specific person with your with your permission. Uh, but yeah, that's the hallmark of, of any counseling program is confidentiality for sure. Great questions. Yes, sir. What uh, veterans do you have any information with VA? <clears throat> Did you catch that, Dan? Oh, I didn't hear that. Sorry. Um, do we have anything that specifically serves veterans? Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, really exciting, actually. We have a number of people who have uh, specific training in helping our military personnel. In fact, our, one of our clinical directors, Dr. Brandon Hayes, did his PhD residency at the VA in Minneapolis. And we currently have a counselor working for us part-time right now who works full-time at the VA in Detroit. Um, so they have passed on a lot of training and expertise to us. And furthermore, uh, well, military services has a member assistance program. So if there are members who have military, military background, and uh, perhaps they, they are worshiping or a member of a congregation that doesn't have a member assistance program, they can actually contact well military services and get a referral, and we can meet with them, uh, you know, and remove that financial obstacle that way as well. Um, so we have a hard work for, for with military, and, and I, I love kind of the system that we have set up for that. Good question. I have a question. Um, if the minister, uh, did the council consider the same rules for um, um, the confession, saying that it's, someone says, a police says, a serial killer said, I killed 10 people, and the council heard that. Is he forced to, to go to court and say, hey, I heard he said that, or, the rules saying that he's going to commit a future crime, he has to tell? It's a good question. Uh, Dan, if somebody uh, in the counseling session uh, admits to some kind of a uh, heinous crime, what is the obligation of the counselor and uh, where does confidentiality begin and end? Yeah, it largely depends on different state laws, but in terms of confidentiality, the, the, really the only way that we can break confidentiality is if someone threatens to harm or uh, injure themselves or someone else. Um, if there's an in, imminent uh, danger to someone else, then we have to break confidentiality. Uh, or if they were to threaten their own life, uh, then we have to break confidentiality for the protection uh, of that individual's life. Um, so 
But other than that, uh, there's there's confidentiality laws apply, and, and we stick very strictly to that. Okay. I'm going to pass a sign-up sheet around. Uh, most of you should have received our twice a year magazine. Does anybody not have one? Um, and uh, if you would like to receive that and get an update on our ministry a couple of times a year, uh, please sign up. If you don't care for it, don't feel bad. I, you won't hurt my feelings and just pass it along. But I'll start right over here. Yeah. I mean, this is a charity with the combined federal campaign uh, to federal employees. Like you had Way type of thing? Or? No, the federal government has, uh, every year they do a big drive if you're a federal employee, you can donate free packs to a list of charities. So um, I, I, I believe we are. I would have to check for sure. Um, and uh, Dan, do you know if we are uh, registered to be able to be the charity recipient of federal employees' donations? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I vaguely remember one of our um, one of our staff members talking about that. Uh, I don't remember. I thought that there was some kind of difficulty with us being a Christian organization or something regarding that. I, I, but don't quote me on that. I, I I don't know for sure. It's a good question, though. After class, I'll give you my card and you can give me a holler, and I'll check back at the shop. Okay. All right. Other questions. Yes, Pastor. You, you mentioned uh, finances sometimes being an obstacle for people seeking counseling. But what about pride as an obstacle or just the sense of, I'm not really that broken. I, I don't think this is for me. Um, well, a person, if, a pa if, a, if the shepherd believes the person is broken and the person says, I'm not broken, what do you think is involved there? It starts with a D. Denial. Okay, and so how do you how do you get the person over that hump? And uh, I've had that question before, and I don't know if I know the specific answer, but uh, I've had pastors tell me that they have recommended to their member, give it a try once, give it a try once, and uh, often that is it, all, suddenly the fear is gone. Maybe reality is beginning to set in. This isn't so bad. They're not making me feel like a fool. And uh, I, this is maybe a, a chance to get the help that down deep I probably realized I needed. Dan, would you want to yeah. add to that at all? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly right. It, it, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a, a safe suggestion to say, hey, let, you know, we have this service. You can meet with someone by video from your own home. You don't have to travel anywhere. Just meet with them get an assessment. Let's just take a look. Um, let's, you may be completely right. There, there may be no difficulties or that brokenness isn't, isn't impacting your life in, in, uh, in this way. Um, let's just take a look. Uh, you know, go once. You're under a lot of obligation to go six, seven, eight times, but, you know, go once. Uh, and many times, that's all we do is we just meet with someone to help them assess their problem area and give recommendations. Uh, wasn't too long ago, a real quick example, we had a referral from pastor on the West Coast, and he, he called me up and said, Dan, I, I, I don't know how to, how to say this, I have a member, he, he's just odd. And, and I said, well, that's, that's okay with me with odd people. Um, let, let's get him connected. So we got him connected the next day with, with one of our psychologists, it was actually uh, Dr. Hayes, who I mentioned before. And after that meeting, he, Dr. Hayes called me up and said, wow, Dan, that was one of the cleanest examples of someone in a manic phase of bipolar depression. Um, what was the what was the recommendation? You know, get to your doctor. Um, and they actually ended up going to the ER. Pastor called me back probably, oh, I bet you it was three months later, and said, Dan, I, I just have to I just have to tell you that that member that we referred is a completely different person. We had no idea what he was struggling with. Uh, he's on medication now, he's doing great. Uh, he said, I gotta tell you, we, we almost disbanded the choir because the choir members didn't know how to handle it. Uh, and he was causing so much disruption. Uh, and, and there were other, you know, facets of his involvement in church that were, that were problematic. He said, had we not referred him for that one session, we would have continued to just kind of step around his problem. Uh, and he would have continued to fester in the congregation. So, <clears throat> it's just one. 
um, just one time, um, and no one's under any obligation to uh, continue or to even take our advice. But we are here out of Christian love. Uh, we are people who adhere to a conceptual Lutheran worldview, which is essential. Uh, there are so many counselors out there that are not only anti-Christian, but it, it, so many even Christian counselors that have a uh, kind of a, a, a different uh, understanding of the inerrancy of Scripture and and, uh, and where they stand. Um, so we adhere to that professional Lutheran worldview, uh, where we are that that is an essential part of our training and what we offer in counseling. What what I'm counselor agrees to come on board with us, uh, a couple of things happen first. First of all, they have to answer questions about their beliefs. Even, you know, they're Wells, they belong to a Wells church, but they've been trained often in secular universities. And so um, we have what's called a faith questionnaire that I have uh, put together, and then they answer the questions and I have to review it. Sadly, we have had to reject some Wells counselors because they, their belief system has been tainted by their training. But uh, that's part of what our counselors have to go through in order to be vetted. And then if they are going to come on board with us, they have to agree in advance to going through a doctrinal training uh, done online by a retired seminary professor of ours who's also a certified counselor part-time uh, on our staff. And so we don't take that for granted. That third leg of the stool I was talking about before, we take that very, very seriously. And Dan, you mentioned to me one time that not even all Christian counselors um, adhere to what the Bible has to say. Can you remember the story you told me about a, a, a marital counseling situation that didn't go so well in a Christian counseling setting? Yeah, I, I think I know the one you're, you're talking about. This was a referral actually from a pastor on the East Coast, not your pastor, nor here in Maryland, don't worry. Uh, but this was a referral for a marriage counseling. There was infidelity in the marriage. Uh, and the pastor referred that, that uh, uh, couple to us. And he said, you know, I, I had referred this couple to a, a local Christian counselor who I had worked with in the, in the past. And the, the members came uh, back to the pastor after they, they met with this counselor a few times, and they said, Pastor, I, I don't think that this is, this is the right fit for us. And the pastor was, you know, he said, why? I, you know, what, what, what's the problem? I, I make referrals there quite a bit, and I, I'd like to know. And <clears throat> so the, the member said, well, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this uh, Christian counselor uh, said to them, God is a God of love. And certainly a God of love would want the two of you to be happy. Perhaps it's time to explore relationships outside of marriage to really fully experience your love. Uh, and, it, you know, the pastor was horrified that, that, you know, someone that he would prefer, uh, you know, to came back with this kind of approach and clearly not a biblical understanding of, of, of marriage, uh, which, which, you know, again, there, there are, there's a wide range of what is called Christian counseling out there. Uh, and uh, we, we, are, we are truly uh, on the side of the biblical integration uh, and an understanding of, of Scripture that really applies to our brokenness. Now, as Pastor Matt mentioned before, God has many things to say about life. Uh, and when people come to us in their deepest, darkest times of their life, that's when we need to hear God's grace and God's love. And it is an opportunity for us to share that with them at, at perhaps uh, just one of the best times when they're, when they're open to hearing it. Um, so when people come to us, if they're well, if they're not well, if they're uh, anything or nothing, um, we're, we're, just, we're just ready to share the, the grace of God uh, at, at just a, a very important time in life. Questions? Yes, Pastor. Uh, yeah, this... this uh... It's, it's not really in response to that, but that brought something to mind. If you could put a finer point on, on this, one objection that came back to me once is, oh, Christian counseling? How's that going to help? All they're going to do is tell me to just believe more in Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you want to respond to that? Pray more. You know, if you would just pray more, that would, that would help. And, you know, that's been, that's, so people have this myth, 
have, have this uh, uh, misinterpretation and misperception of, of, of what Christian counseling is. Hey, we are evidence based, we, we are all trained, um, we are licensed, um, we know different therapeutic techniques, cognitive behavioral, solution focus, motivational interviewing, all of these tried and true techniques and uh, ways that we can help. Uh, individuals with different skills to understand and address depression, anxiety, trauma, you know, we go down the, go down the list. But, and, and here's the important part, we, we are also trained to integrate God's Word into that and to bring an understanding of His grace, His love, forgiveness. Uh, so we have really the best of both worlds, and I think that that is essential. Because when you, when you have one without the other, you just you lose so much opportunity. Um, how can I sit down with someone struggling with deep depression and not remind them of God's promises? Um, how can I, you know, how can you address those difficulties in life um, with, without talking about Scripture and God's Word? It's not all we do, not 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 at all. Um, and we don't want to leave people with the feeling of, if I were just a better Christian, I wouldn't have problems. Um, there's a theology of suffering. There's a purpose for suffering. And we want people to understand that. We want people to acknowledge that. Um, it helps them to learn how to be content in any and all situation. Um, but with that, uh, with that understanding, you have to know God's grace and His love and, and, a, and, a, or, and a proper understanding of law and gospel, which is what our synod does so well, uh, is that understanding of His law and His gospel. Um, so that, that's a, a great comment, Pastor. By the way, the little picture on top of Dan is what he is able to see it. You probably assume that already. I have one question. Um, when two people come together and they don't mix well and they misunderstand each other, how do you first understand the misunderstanding question that they mesh together properly and say, hey, this is what they're seeing, what they're saying, or it's really... They are receiving what they say. I don't like what you hear. Um, Dan, did you happen to catch that? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear that. Uh, when, it, when it comes to people that are not uh, um, understanding or appreciating each person, the other person's point of view, what's the, what's the basic approach that we take? Yeah, it, well, you know, again, you, there's there's a number of different approaches. Uh, we want to we want to help them with good communication skills. Uh, and we want to help them, uh, first of all, to understand and appreciate the other person. Here's the, a great example of Christian counseling, because how do we do that? What is our motivation for wanting to understand someone else? You have to be pretty unselfish, don't you? You have to be pretty willing to set aside your needs and your thoughts and, and what you think is best, and you have to put them over here. And you have to be fully present to understand someone else's point of view. That's a hallmark of communication. You first have to understand the other person. How do you do that? Well, let's look at Philippians. Do nothing out of a selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourself. Consider the example of Christ Jesus. There's, there's the integration of Christian counseling. If you, if you know God's grace, if you know God's love, here's your opportunity to demonstrate it. Set aside your, your misperceptions of this of this communication problem. Set that aside and, and understand fully the other person first. I guarantee your communication will be better and it will flow better. Now, can I teach you those communication skills without an understanding of Christianity and, and unselfishness and God's grace? Sure. That happens all the time. And you can walk away and buy a great book. You can go to a great website and they can learn communication skill 101 and, and learn all that. I'm telling you a way that's going to be lasting. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a way that you can demonstrate the love of God. Uh, and what he has done for us in that communication. So, great, great question. Yes, ma'am. I have to address um, people who are gay and are coming for counseling. The question is how do we address the topic of gayness, people coming for counseling uh, for that particular issue? Don't blame like any other problem. Uh, we do an assessment. Um, what, what, do, what do you want to address? How do you want to address this problem? And we help them out. Um, you know, the, the, the area of homosexuality and other, you know, social issues are a big hot topic, especially in our culture nowadays. Uh, and there, there are laws being passed in, in different municipalities that, that will, uh, 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 that address how counseling can occur with people of homosexual, les 
Indian background. Uh, and it just happened in, in Appleton in one of our summit areas. They, the city council banned the use of a, of a particular therapeutic technique, uh, which actually we don't use. It's a misperception of what Christian counseling is. Um, but just like anyone else, um, you, they're coming to us. We're ready to, to share God's love with them. Um, we're ready to help them with their problem area. Uh, and if, if someone comes to us and wants to live a life, uh, knowing that they have homosexual tendencies and want to live a pure life, we're going to help them with that. And we're going to help them to uh, make sure that they're not acting out on those tendencies and, and issues. Um, just like any other problem. Good questions, by the way. Um, <clears throat> One of the w reasons that this, uh, our ministry is growing so rapidly is because I, pastors around the country realize that um, they do counseling, but is your pastor, and this is not a knock on him, is he a trained clinician? No, he's not. Will he do pastoral counseling? For sure. But sometimes there are issues beyond a pastor's training uh, and maybe time limitations where he can pass it off to somebody who's been trained in a certain area, and we're fine. Uh, one of our professors at the seminary, Professor John Schutze, did you have him back? Yeah, a classmate of mine, that shows how old I am. And uh, um, he is a trained clinician, a certified clinician in the state of Wisconsin, working part-time for us, full-time at the seminary. And he will tell future pastors at the seminary, don't overestimate your abilities in this area and realize that there is a resource available for you and for your congregation. And I'm going to just tell you a story from back when I was a parish pastor, or as my older brother puts it, who's a retired pastor, back when I was a real pastor. Okay? <laughs> he, he kids me about that. Uh, yeah, Jim, back when you were a real pastor, um, you have to realize he's John the Third, though. Okay, uh, grandfather John the first, our father John the second, older brother John the third, his oldest is John the fourth, and I'm James the less. And uh, <laughs> anyway, back when I was a um, a real pastor, um, I was in Watertown, Wisconsin, Trinity Lutheran, big congregation, busy guy. And, uh, but I did take courses in counseling. I read books on counseling. I have a certain amount of life experience. I know God's word. And, uh, you know, I, I have a certain amount of intelligence. And I thought I was pretty adequate in the area of counseling. And this was years ago before the member assistance program, obviously. But there is one particular woman in the congregation, probably at the time in her mid-40s, multiple issues that she had. And I wanted to help. A shepherd wants to. And so I met with this gal, probably uh, it was every week, a good hour every week, and um, trying to help her. And this went on for about 10 months. And I saw no progress. And so I recommended to her that she see somebody like Dan. And her answer to me was, no, you're my pastor, I need to see you. Okay. Counseled a few more times, saw no progress, kind of put my foot down and said, I'll see you again, but only after you see one of these professional Christian counselors. She reluctantly agreed to do so, and her problem, I believe it was after the second session, was diagnosed. She had what is commonly referred to as an attachment disorder. What was she attached to? <laughs> Never saw that one coming, folks. Uh, I don't believe it was any kind of a sinful attachment. She had what I call in layman's terms, kind of a clingy personality. Ever know somebody like that? It's kind of latch on to people, glom on to people. And here I was, all this time, all this effort, all this concern, and in the end, I was doing what? I was feeding the problem. I was enabling the issue. I was making her worse. And so um, the encouragement to pastors today and leadership in congregations are realizing pastors have a certain amount of training, a certain amount of experience, a lot of love for their people, and in most cases that's adequate to help the hurting person they're trying to help. But sometimes, sometimes you need to refer. Other questions? So, Dan, do you, could you could you maybe introduce us to a few of the counselors, please? Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. 
So we only have a couple of minutes left here, right? We have yeah. 1030 church, I believe, right? Yeah, so we, and you so want me to stay here for that? <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you, Pastor. <laughs> Scroll up, Dan. Oh, okay, my still. My yeah, I, we just see the top part. Okay, um, so this is Dr. Hayes. No, I still see, I, Dan, we still see only the uh, the uh, cover page. Okay, hold on one second, then. Let me just reshare that, then, and get that back up here for you. Hold on one second. Uh, let's retry that. How about... Mm, now, we are providers and... There you go, yeah. there you go. Okay, okay. Um, so that's Dr. Hayes, he's the one that did his PhD residency, he's one of our clinical directors, uh, and works out of our Appleton uh, office overseas. Appleton, Fond du Lac, and our office in Michigan as well. Um, a couple of other people I can maybe point out to you, let's see, oh, oh here's Carolina Acosta, uh, right underneath Dr. Hayes, she is unique because she is a bilingual counselor. She, can, uh, she has uh, Spanish, um, uh, grew up in Venezuela, actually, and uh, came here. Um, so she is one of our counselors. Her husband is actually a pastor at Risen Savior in Milwaukee. Um, so great Christian counselor. And what she's able to do is help our well Hispanic ministries around the country when there are people who uh, need help and need that other language. So it's um, really neat to have Carolina on staff. Uh, maybe point out, uh, here's Amanda Cadwell. Um, this, this is, uh, I like to point out Amanda Cadwell because um, our counselors aren't all physically located in one of our clinic locations. Um, Amanda is in Boise, Idaho, and she does probably 90% of her work all from home online. She just works out of her home. Um, there are a number of, number of people like that uh, that we have on staff, um, so they don't all have to live or work in one of our clinic areas. Uh, we can find great well counselors no matter where they're located, which always leads me to the to the point where I say, if you know of any well counselors who would like to work for us full time, part time, um, let me know. Um, we would like to talk with them again, um, see if, if uh, they can help us out as well. A um, couple of others, maybe uh, Cheryl Cowling. She works here in our Germantown office, where I'm located here in Wisconsin, and she is a traumatologist. Her area of expertise related to helping both children and adults with trauma. Uh, and it could be trauma from, could be from a crisis situation or a natural disaster, fire, flood, hurricane, tornado. Uh, but uh, it's many times as a result of abuse, sexual, physical, um, or emotional abuse. And But she does a great, great work with, with adults and kids. But again, that's just in, in one of the areas of specialty that many of our, of our people have. Um, let's see, I can maybe point out, keep scrolling down. Well, you know, we have a couple of counselors on our staff who are actually full-time pastors, too. Um, here's Pastor Ed Fry. He is in Idaho. He's a pastor out there. And right down here is Pastor Tim Temnick. He's a pastor in Nebraska. Both of them went on uh, and got their degree in counseling psychology and are now licensed uh, in their state to provide counseling services. So. Think of the education, my goodness, they just went, you know, all the way through seminary and then another uh, three or more years uh, to get their counseling degree. So, uh, but we're really glad to have them on staff. They work for us part time. Dan, we're going to take we're going to take one more question and then we're going to let you go. There's okay, a question. Yep. Just about um, we were just talking. So, because we you don't have a clinician in the state or if we went and said we need the help, are we only available for the short, short term part of it? What do you mean by short term, Dan? Like what you um, so, refer out. So when a pastor makes a referral, um, he will make a referral and tell us the session limit. 
So he may refer someone and say, we'd like to provide one session or three sessions or five sessions. Uh, and that's what we stick with. You know, and it's largely a budget that the congregation has available. Um, so we'll meet with individuals and stick with that session limit, uh, and then congregations will, will cover that cost. Does that answer your question? So it wouldn't be like you would be our, someone from there would be our regular counselor and we would see them for years? Probably not okay. unless, unless you. Um, it depends on the congregational situation. If the congregation has the funds, you can continue on. Um, the average number of sessions needed per person getting help is seven. That's what our research has uh, concluded. And uh, people can, like I said before, pay the congregation. The congregation pays the district. The district pays us. So that's how you get any more sessions. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Do you deal with the alcohol? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, if somebody is in the throes of addiction, uh, we probably will recommend that they get you know, inpatient treatment first. And then uh, <coughs> once they are detoxed, we are then able to help them. Okay. Um, there was a person here from end of life consultation. Are you connected to them? No, we're not. No, we're not. Dan, we're going to have to let you go because we have a church service in about 15 or so minutes. I have a quick question, though, and that is, did you go to church today? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, so here's the thing. So I went to last night. We have Saturday night church at, at my church, and that counts, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, just checking on you. Let's give him a hand, okay? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Dan. Yeah, certainly. Thank you all for your time and attention. Lord's blessings on your ministry there. It was great to join you this morning. Have a great day. You as well, Dan. Thank you. Okay, great guy. Thanks, everybody. That's unless you, if you have a question after church, please. I'll hang around for a while. You can ask. But uh, thank you.